The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On a Sabbath day, Jesus had gone for a meal to the house of one of the leading Pharisees, and they watched him closely. He then told the guests a parable because he had noticed how they picked the places of honour. He said this, When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take your seat in the place of honour. A more distinguished person than you may have been invited, and then the person who invited you both may come and say, Give up your place to this man, and then, to your embarrassment, you would have to go and take the lowest place. No, when you are a guest, make your way to the lowest place and sit there, so that when your host comes, he may say, My friend, move up higher. In that way, everyone with you at the table will see you honoured. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the man who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to his host, When you give a lunch or a dinner, do not ask your friends, brothers, relations or rich neighbours for fear they repay your courtesy by inviting you in return. No. When you have a party, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. That they cannot pay you back means that you are fortunate because repayment will be made to you when the virtuous rise again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, brothers and sisters, this evening in, we have the theme of humility, be humble, be humble, be humble. So because of that, I would like to humble ourselves and begin with a fairy tale. Okay? All right? Now, this fairy tale is about the princess and the frog. Not that the frogs we are used to these days. Huh? The princess, princess and the frog. The story goes like this, you know. There was a king who had three daughters. Huh? And, um, of course, the youngest daughter's daughter was so beautiful. But the palace was so confined that she had to always roam to the forest nearby to look for things to do. And she loved to carry with her a golden ball which she had. And one day when she was playing with this golden ball, it hit a stone and went straight into the well. And this well was so deep, we cannot see the end of the well. So she was, of course, crying there and lamenting there, so loud that a frog heard her cries. And this frog came to her and asked her, what's the matter? And she said, I've lost the ball. So the frog said, OK, I'll get you the ball. On one condition, you must show me some kindness. So the girl said, of course, I'll show you some kindness. Of course, I'll give you my best dress and I'll give you my crown. Now, the frog had no intentions of being the best dressed frog, you know. So he had no need for the crown and the dress. But anyway, he jumped into the well and came up with the ball. And, you know, this girl, when she saw the ball, she took the ball and she forgot about her promise. She was thinking to, my, to herself, my gosh, this is a frog. They are useless. Why keep the promise? And she went back home. So while she was at dinner with her father and her sisters, there was a knock on the door. And so she, this young princess ran and opened the door. It was this frog. Let's call him Froggy. Huh? This frog, Froggy. So when she saw Froggy, she slammed the door. And she went back and the father asked, what's happening? And then she had to tell the whole story. And then the father says this, 
the king says, you should never ever despise those who have helped you. What you have promised, you must deliver. Words are for promises to be kept. Don't use them if you don't intend to do it or don't mean it. Now the king told her, go and bring Froggy to the dinner table. So she went and brought Froggy to the dinner table. And of course, the frog enjoyed the meal, but she lost her appetite. So what happened? After the meal, she took Froggy by her two fingers and brought it up to her room. And she put it in the corner. And Froggy challenged her. He said, you must keep your promise, he said. I'm not asking much, he said. I'm only asking a kiss from you. Just close your eyes and kiss my nose. That's all I'm asking. So she closed her eyes and kissed her nose. And you know the story. He became a prince. Uh, and they all went off into the sunset, uh, as fairy tales do mention, into the sunset. Uh, and uh, of course, they inherited the kingdom, which was meant for them for the, forever. Uh. So, brothers and sisters, I began with this story. Why? Because there's so much to teach us. So much to teach us. Uh. Now, in the gospel, we are told by Jesus, learning humility is simply associating with those who are on the margins. Those who are on the margins. God is an indiscriminate host whose delight is to feast with those who are overlooked in society, in a society that scrambles for honor. The blind people, they feel the warmth of a fire that they cannot see. The lonely would never get invited anywhere to anything. Those are the people that are led to the seats of honor in the kingdom. So the little people who cannot return the invitation are important to us. They hunger not just for food, but for fellowship that the table will provide for them. Where, what we eat, where we eat, how we eat, when we eat, with whom we eat, tell us a great deal about the social hierarchy within a given society. In other words, the table reveals our society. I love movies, you know. I love movies, you know that. There is a movie, 2005 movie. Huh? Okay. Guess who is the title? Now, this is a remake of a 1967 movie starring Audrey Hepburn and Sidney Poitier. The ones with the grey hair are already reminiscing. Right? So, it's a remake about a man, an American man, American father, African-American father, struggling to deal with his daughter's Caucasian fiancé. And the comedy of the film revolves around the clash of cultures at the dinner table. Try to get that movie. I saw it on YouTube. YouTube, huh? you have it. Brothers and sisters, let us remember that usually our intention would always be to share the meal with someone from our own circle. No? But when someone from the outside comes in, it upsets our balance. What, where, how, when, with whom we eat tell us a great deal about ourselves and about our lives. So today as we come to celebrate the Eucharist, 
we are asked not to continue to sideline the marginalized. To so continue to sideline the marginalized. We are called to include people into our household, into our lives, to the table fellowship. For in Luke's gospel, the table is the hospitality of God. And so Jesus is trying to tell them the hospitality of God is not what hospitality that you think of. Everyone is included in the meal. So, who are, they, who are those who are marginalized in our society? Maybe those uh, who are gender biased. Maybe those beyond our sexual orientation. Maybe those who are beyond our occupation, our religious affiliation, marital status. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. But today, the teaching is simply this. Be humble enough like Jesus. Let us not look at status. The teaching is this. Let us include people in our family, in our family. Of course, every family will have someone whom we cannot relate with. We'll have. It's not new. It, is the, it happens to most of our families, to the best of us. How can we include that person into our table fellowship? For the table in Luke's gospel is the hospitality of God. Okay? All right? Don't just remember the frog. <laughs> the table hospitality, table fellowship, that is what we are called to remember today.